Welcome everybody to a Friday edition of Live with Lyle. We are sitting here with Jason Pace and Corporal David Brown of the Missouri Water Patrol. And for you guys that are, have questions about boating and water safety, this is the time to get it in here. We're going to be doing this for a while and we're going to take questions and they're going to go over a bunch of other stuff. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Uh, so now's the time. If you've got questions about boating safety, your life jackets, things you are supposed to do, things you're not supposed to do, this is the time to get them in here. So let's see what we got. How you guys doing today? Doing well. Awesome. Doing awesome. Well. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming up. We've had so many questions on, on boating safety and uh, how to check your life jackets and can we do this and can we do that and um, when this all started here a few months ago I should have wrote all those down but you, you know should because was in the meantime um, we've had some accidents that you and I talked about before and we want to make it clear to people that boat house important boating safety is and it's not just about wearing your PFD you know you have uh, a lot of other factors that will keep you from getting in trouble and some of them are lawful some of them aren't but the it's not about saving you from getting a ticket or getting a ticket it's to save your life Absolutely. and that's the most important thing so um i'm so glad you guys come in i didn't realize you live so close to me but that yeah. that makes it even better because i can holler at you and get a question <laughs> answered from my exactly. own self yep. you guys want to introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are sure I'm Corporal David Brown uh, with Missouri State Highway Patrol's Marine Division. I'm our Northern Zone, our Northern Marine Zone Supervisor. Uh, my zone covers our float streams like the Niagara River, Pomontera Lake, Stockton Lake, the Osage Arm and Truman Lake, the Osage River, the Sac River, the Pomontera River, uh, Four Rivers Conservation Area, and we take care of anything marine related, water related within our Troop D Northern Counties, which is about 12, 12, 13 counties. So, so it's, um, just keeps you busy and keeps you spread out. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> and my name is uh, Jason Pace. I'm a sergeant with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. And yes, you see Missouri State Highway Patrol uniforms on. Those that don't uh, know, in 2011, the Water Patrol and the Highway Patrol merged. And so that's why you may be on the waterway and see a big sticker on the side of a Donzie where it says the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Of course, that's not the highway, but they, we are part and of the same organization under the umbrella of the highway patrol. And so, so I serve as our public information officer. I brought actually the expert in today. He is one of our <laughs> Marine operations officers of the highway patrol. We have two zones uh, within uh, Troop D, Troop D's water division. We have two different zones. And so of course he supervises the Northern zone and then we have another zone which handles the Southern portion of Troop D. Troop D, if you don't know, is the 18 counties within Southwest Missouri. We have nine troops throughout the state. And um, so we have um, water officers, of course, in those where there's um, lakes and streams and so forth. So thank you for the opportunity. I am old enough to remember when the water patrol was separate from the highway patrol. Mm -hmm. And I actually um, knew a gentleman, I can't think of his name right now, but he was a young guy and he was one of the water patrol guys. And when you merged, he ended up being the guy that come in and checked our garage for state inspections. Hmm, okay. uh, he's a really, really super guy. I thought the world of him. Uh, and he come in. Any questions, Cindy? Sean Abney wants to know how long is a fire extinguisher good for? All right. Great uh, question, Sean. Well, it just depends on the fire extinguisher. Um, you just need to look look at your fire extinguisher and look at the expiration date that's posted on it from the manufacturer. And depending on the type and model of a fire extinguisher, they all have the ability to be tested and that'll have the instructions on that individual fire extinguisher for that. And there's a, most of them have a gauge on there that you need to check every time you get in a boat to see if it's in the green or if it's in the red, because if it's in the red, something's to, happened. Yes. If you, if you never check your fire extinguisher, um, have never looked at it, quick, good quick indicator. If it's, if that's pointing towards the red, it, Replaced. Even so. if it's getting down close, yes, because <laughs> you know, you, like I say, nobody wants to get in trouble, and if you need it and it doesn't operate, it's useless. Exactly. You know, we usually have two in the boat just in case one of them would go bad. But I know that's not required. But as you get older, you learn things. You know oh, what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
welcome you guys. There's a bunch of you coming in. We appreciate you watching the show today. If you have any questions, be sure to get them out there. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask you guys about is um, kill switches in boats. Um, the first question is, if a boat did not come equipped with a kill switch, are you required to add one to it? You need to. So it, it's it's a safety issue. If you don't have a kill switch, if an incident happens or you're thrown overboard and, you know, that kill switch isn't there and you don't have that lanyard attached and it, you know, it doesn't kill the vessel, it'll just sit there and do, it'll, it'll start doing circles. And, and it's going to get you. It, yes. And sadly, we've had some instances just like that over the past few years where um, fishermen and boaters have, have had that. And they were thrown from the boat. They did not kill the, the, the engine and, and sadly lost their life. So um, you cannot stress that enough. Now, we was talking about this before the show, and uh, you'd give me an example of a guy that actually had one that slipped over his wrist instead of snapped on to a shirt. Yeah, so a lot of people will take that that lanyard that attaches to their kill switch, <coughs> if they have a lanyard anyway, there's a lot of kill switches that are electronic now. Um, but if you have that hard lanyard, make sure you actually have it snapped to your equipment, to your body somehow. And or if you're one of the one of the operators, like when I get on my charger boat up on Palm de Pier Lake, it is a lanyard. I have that lanyard set so that when I put it around my hand, it's adjusted. And it, you have to work to get it off. That's that um, be a safety. lot of people will just loop it through their uh, loop it through their snap, put it over their their hand on their wrist, and as they're driving, that leak gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if there is an incident that happens, say you hit a partially submerged log, tree stump, something of that nature, and you're ejected from the vessel, there is the possibility of that loop that it has become so big. It'll just come right off your hand and your vessel will keep spinning. And you might want had, to have it on. Exactly. And we had an incident like that last year on Stockton Lake. Um, it just came right off the guy's hand, right off his arm. The vessel did a loop, cut his arm off. So they were able to reattach it, thankfully. But yes, so just a, just a bad day. Michael Pence, they did catch up with me, but I invited them to them today. So um, finally found you. There once was a time when I would. Be, feel real bad when I was sitting with these guys, but today I feel very privileged to have them in the house. Hey, JR, how you doing? Um, one of the topics that's become a real hot item with not only Cindy and I, but the guy that does our Monday night show, Catfish Weekly, Doc Lang, is um, PFDs, life jackets. Yeah. Um, they are required by law, in my understanding, for anyone 15 years or under any time the boat is moving. Is that correct? Federal law, yes. Um, every state, when it comes to the PFDs, every state law is a trickle down from federal law. Um, when it comes to the state of Missouri, any child under the age of seven has to have a PFD on when they're on the water. And that's so, the state law. Yes. State law, okay. Yes. So now our legislature, um, they are looking at changing that. And honestly, I do believe that's a positive aspect and putting compliance with federal law and up that age a little bit. Every year across the state, there are drownings with little people, as I call them, and one little person drowning is just one too many. Yeah, I agree um, 100%. And even the adults, they go into the water and people don't realize just different surface temperatures, impact velocities, things of that nature. And particularly on a little person because their lungs are so much smaller. Mm -hmm. When a person hits that water or it's an adverse temperature, i.e. it's cold water, <clears> the person <throat> will tend to, to gasp for air. If that person, particularly again little people, hit the water, they gasp for air, they suck a bunch of water, their lungs fill up faster. And, you know, they can go under the water once, gasp for air, you know, inhale a bunch of water, and maybe will never come up. So that's why it's for someone like me, Jason, all the officers in the Marine Division, and just on the Highway Patrol in general, <coughs> it, it's just a safety issue. It's not, you know, look the confined people, but it's it's general safety, and it would it it saves lives. One of the things that I would like to see change is Cindy and I do a lot of 
catfish tournaments. Uh, not so many this year with water like it is, but you know that's that's the way it goes. Um, but we we travel a lot, and I am pushing all of the tournament directors. Um, most every tournament series that we fish has a rule that you must wear your PFD at takeoff, and I would like to see them change that to where you must wear it anytime the big motors run it. Now, you're not ever going to get guys to fish with them on, not everybody. Some sure. of them will. My buddy Doc, he never takes his off. He doesn't. And uh, uh, Cindy's on me all the time because I grew up and you didn't have to you didn't wear them. You didn't have to wear them. And now they're uncomfortable, and they're really not that mm -hmm. bad. But the old orange ones is what everybody had, <laughs> and they was yeah. uncomfortable, yeah. you know. Yeah. But these new ones, even though the the – Ones that come around you, they're very comfortable, and the new self-inflators are the ones that have the tab on them. They're very comfortable, um, and they're a little more expensive, but they're not that far out of line anymore compared to a good quality wraparound. Um, is there anything that you guys can expand on that would – recommendations for people on what, what they need to look for when they buy a, a flotation device? Primarily just that it's a U.S. Coast Guard approved personal flotation device. Um, and that ensures that the guidelines and criteria are met that for the intended purpose of what the classification of PFD is for, it's going to save your life. Whereas if you stray away from that, it just, you, you know, you kind of, kind of gambling. So. And, and make it's sure they're, they're fit appropriately. You know, look at the, look at the specifications, the size and weight and so forth. If you try to put an adult jacket on a child, Obviously, the head of water is going to slip yeah. right off. You know, we, we just like on the road, we never know when our accident is going to happen, our crash and so forth. And so you have to plan accordingly. You have to plan, a, you know, just as you were in the vehicle with the seat belt, you need to plan um, as if you were to have a spill or a fall into the water, especially in this cold water, it's going to be a, a shock to your system and it's hard to deal with that. And so, um, you know, plan accordingly have enough life jackets for everybody that's on, on board your vessel or who you're pulling and make sure they're accessible. Even though you may not, you may be over that age of seven or as an adult, they may be, need, need to be accessible. Stowed into the seat underneath the compartments is not accessible. So if you have an emergency situation, you need to have that available for that person. Which brings up a question that I also have. When your throwable device, everybody's required to have a throwable. And my sure. understanding is it's supposed to be right there where you can get it, not in a compartment That's, somewhere. You have to have it up there. Are the life jackets the same way? Do you, are they supposed to be out where you can access them right away? Yes. Or, okay, they have to be all right. That's that's a great clarification. Yes, that's the way the law First, statutory burgers, they have to be accessible. And the easiest way I explain that to individuals is if you have to move anything or open anything in order to get to that life jacket, it is not accessible. Okay. So it has to be there. And how long are they good for when you purchase? Say you buy one that's not an inflator. Yes, sir. It's a wrap around. What's the average life expectancy out of that? Depends on how hard it's used. Um, they will last for a long, long time. Okay, um, so there's no, no tag on it for expiration. I'm sure there is a tag on it. I mean, okay. I don't know. Uh, check on it like you would a child restraint system, but, mm -hmm. but look at the specifications on that. Oh, well, that was the reason I asked, because well, yes. of the child restraint restraint yeah, system. Every, everyone's, you yeah. want, when, you check, when you check a PFD for serviceability, really for statutory requirements, the serviceability is, is there any tears, rips in the material? Um, are the straps good? Are the buckles good? Is everything, you know, is everything still solid? If, if even on that outer outer casing, if you would, because um, the internals, the foam, or whatever type of flotation material, if there's anything ripped, torn, it's not serviceable anymore. Mm -hmm. It needs replaced. You know, and that uh, we was in um, at Wheeler Lake in Alabama fishing a tournament a couple of years ago, and the Coast Guard come by late in the evening. It was like seven thirty. We was a bunch of us is out partying, waiting for the next morning to go out fishing, and uh, there was probably 60 or 70 boats parked there, and uh, the guy said, do you mind if we check your boats? And I said, no, you're kind of late, aren't you? He said, well, it's either check you tonight, where you're all in one spot, or we're going to check you as you go through the launch in the morning. <laughs> the tournament. I said, well, you know, yeah. come on in. Mm -hmm. So he gets up there, and Cindy and I had two floatable device throwables, mm -hmm. and about one of them had a, just a little tiny tear in it. 
And he said, you got to throw that away. It's no good. Yep. So is that a, a, that a Coast Guard or is that Missouri approved also? That's Missouri also. Okay. If, there, if, if there's a, if, if somebody's ever stopped, inspected, or comes in for a courtesy inspection, and any of those PFDs or throwable devices, if there's any type of ripper, ripper tear, no matter the size, it's no longer serviceable as per statutory verbiage. So it, it would need replaced. That, and while, yeah. And while we're speaking of that too, I think it's the time to to make you aware of we have some free inspections that available to the public free of charge um, all throughout the state. So. Um, May 18th to the 24th is National Safe Boating Week. Actually, on the 18th, all throughout the state, different inspection stations, we're going to have marine operations officers available, and you can go to our Highway Patrol website to find out these locations. Um, I know we have three right within Troop D here, but that allows the public free of charge to come and allow officers to look at the equipment. And you need to do it your same, so you know, yourself. So you need to look at your trailer, your equipment, your PFDs, and making sure you're ready to go before you head out. Now, I know a lot of us are getting out of the waters, but especially here in the end of the month, the recreational boaters will be out there when it's kind of the unofficial beginning of the summer season, right. Memorial Day, and so you're going to start seeing a lot of, and it's notorious, Never that weekend, everybody ventures out, and you've got flat tires on your trailers, <laughs> you've got, you know, all this equipment, it's, it's been wet, it's been, been sitting there under the elements, and you, you expect it to be in the same working condition as you did when you left it, and it's not always always the case. Well, let's face it. Any time, whether it be a house or a boat or a car, when it sets for any extended period of time, it loses. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Set, mm -hmm. People don't realize that. But I think your your boating safety week is a wonderful idea. And if anybody's got any questions about whether they've got the right stuff or their stuff is good or needs to be looked at, that's a perfect time to get a hold of the Water Patrol in Missouri and go down there. If free and they'll and, the, and it's not about getting in trouble. It's about finding out if your stuff's up to spec, and that's a great it's, idea. Yes, no one gets in trouble after courtesy inspections. It's a, it's an education. That's wonderful. So just we, you know, looking at this list right here within Troop D. Now we have again nine troops in the state. Right, right here in Troop D. Looks like on Stockton Lake from ten to twelve at the Orleans uh, Trail Boat Ramp, uh, Palmetto Lake from ten to twelve at the Nemo Marina Cove and on Table Rock Lake from 10 to 12 at the Shell Knob Access. And so at those times, again, on the 18th of May, we'll have officers and there's others all throughout the state and you can find those online. Man, what a great deal. And anytime anyone sees a Marine Division officer on the water, if they approach that officer, you know, flag them down or whatever, and they request <coughs> or ask to have a courtesy inspection done, that Marine officer will conduct an inspection for you. And again, it's not a, no one gets in trouble for it. It's just to help the, it's to help educate the boating public on proper safety equipment. Because um, it's every vessel operator's duty to ensure their vessel is safe, not only for themselves and their their occupants, but for all the other boaters on the waterway. Well, that's exactly right. Because if you fall out and your boat's sitting there turning circles, who's the next guy that's going to get? Yeah. It may get you. It may get three or four other boats forward. It actually slows down. Or end up on the bank with on a beach or something with a bunch of people. So, uh, yeah, it's very important to make sure that all this stuff works. And and uh, you know, I, I'm so glad that you guys are here to answer these questions. I'm really shocked that we don't have any more questions because when we done the boating safety show on a Monday night, we had all kinds of them. We didn't have didn't have the answers, you know, other than what I had looked up. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted you guys in here. But um, if anyone, I'm sorry. That's no. Go ahead. If anyone does have any um, statutory questions, if you go to the Missouri State Highway Patrol website and scroll down the left side, there are um, links to the Marine Division, and you click on those links, and that'll take you to wherever wherever you may have a question. And or if you do get online and you go to Missouri Revised Statutes, it's Chapter Three Zero Six, Chapter Everything Marine Corps. Also, I'll bring up a point, and this is for the, the younger boaters out there, or those that are operating the, the uh, personal watercraft and so forth. A lot of people, a lot of parents don't realize that their youth, their child is required to go through an educational course. And so everyone born after January 1st, 1984, is required to go through this, this course in order for them to legally operate a vessel or a boat or a personal watercraft. And again, I think that is a great thing. Um, Cindy and I want to both attend that class. We're not 
believe it or not, we was born before 1984. <laughs> but we want to attend that, and uh, that way we can we can elaborate when somebody asks a question. Uh, now, is this uh, a course that you can take online, or you or do you have to go and to a class? No, there are multiple ways to do it. Um, we offer classes every year, and I finished our last motor safety class with my sound here at Truba a couple weeks ago. But we, we generally at the beginning of every year, the first few months, we'll put dates out and have them at our troop headquarters or other designated areas. And that's that's put out on our patrol website for public information. Um, that way individuals can sign up and or individuals can go to our website, click the links, and take an online course. And you have another option of if there's a group of people that would like to have a class done, and this happens a lot for schools, um, other events, you can contact the Highway Patrol. We will coordinate with, with you and put a class on specifically for you. So if you have a group of, if, so if you had a group of <coughs> regards of eight and individuals that wanted to go through the class just to have any updates, get with this, we'll coordinate it, get a class ID number, that on the books and get it done. The Man. class length is what, seven to eight hours or so, possibly, or? Oh, for the online course? Right. Yeah, it's a few hours, but, but you can break it up. And, and the good thing on that is you can work on it, save it, and come back to it later. You don't have to do it in one set. Very nice, very nice. Now, I, I think that a lot of people should be interested in a course where they can actually sit there one-on-one -on -one with somebody and ask them questions. And this, and this benefit of doing a, even though it may be more inconvenient, doing an actual class with a with an instructor, the students in that class get a lot of experience, knowledge passed on, um, examples, and, and so on for just for things that you know they can think about that you may not get in that online program. I think that's a great great thing. I, I see that. Um, Eric Callaway, thank you for your questions. What paper documents do we need to have in the boat? As far as the paper documents, you just need your certificate of registration on board with the vessel. And that's state law. Even though the you know the registration is displayed on the vessel, per state law, the the owner of that vessel and operator has to ensure that the certificate, the paper certificate of registration is on board that vessel also. And other than that, it would just be if you are under, you know, under the required age and you have to have your voter safety certificate, you have to have your voter safety certificate card with you also. Okay. However, there is one little thing on that. You can have your voter safety card. You can have that put as enforcement on your Missouri driver's license, and you can just carry your license with you. Oh, man, that would be the best way so, yeah, to do it. That's something else you don't have to lose. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. It's no different. Than doing a hunter safety course right, exactly. and getting your card for that. So, uh, great idea. Jake, I'm not sure, but I, I assume that you're talking about the documentation you need to keep on the boat. It would be the same on a lake as it is the yes, river. Missouri waterways. If you have a registered vessel, I think he's talking about uh, having to have license that, that test taken after 84. If you're it doesn't out. matter, I mean, does it? Yes, it does. Actually. Oh, okay. If, you, if that applies to Missouri lakes, if you're on a river of the state, that's actually an exemption for the oh. law for the voter safety card requirement. And if you operate on a, on a river, that's an exemption. You don't have to have your voter safety card. That's what wow. That's, which which, is, that's which okay. is one of the things with the statutes. It, same vessel, same areas. You know, so. I wonder if that's the cause of more lake traffic than river traffic? I don't know. I, mean, I don't yeah, know. It's on the personal water card yeah. at the age of 14. Okay. Great question, Jake. I did not know that it was only on the lakes. I thought it was on all water. Yeah, so that's, that, that's, that's a great that's question. Statue, so. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Did you bribe them with cinnamon rolls? No, Michael, I did not. Cindy quit making me cinnamon rolls. Cindy quit making cinnamon rolls for me. You know, that has been an ongoing thing. Every time we go somewhere, we want her to bring cinnamon rolls, but she doesn't even make them for me anymore. Well. Hey, Jerry, how's it going? Uh... Boater safety is only required for operation. That's correct. Uh, you're welcome, Eric. Where in Northeast Missouri are one of the classes? 
I'm not for sure if you're having any current classes. I tell you what, I'll check for you. We'll look for you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is, you know, again, all can be found on our Missouri State High Patrol website. So we're on the left section there, and you can pull up all the voters' information. But he's going to look for you as we're speaking. James, if I if I'm correct, you live in the Kirksville area. Is that is that right? While while he's looking that up, I want to to remind everybody that's at the CR tournament this weekend. There's around 200 boats in that tournament. Make sure you wear your PFDs. Be safe on the water. And what was the and tell them Alabama state law is you have to have your kill switch. You have to have the kill switch hooked up when that motor is running. Do not get stopped. I know some guys that's been checked down there and they had a couple things that wasn't up to spec. So now is a great time today before that tournament tomorrow to get all your stuff in order. Have your order. license on you. Not have your truck. license on you, not in the truck. That's correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking. I'm not really seeing anything in the northeast as far as what's currently on there. They may have already done all their classes. However, if you want to contact, um, where's, where's he live at? He, li right. he lives in the Kirksville area. Okay. If you want to contact the Troop B headquarters up there and um, inquire if, if they can put on a boater safety class for you, if you have enough people that would want to join that with you, they'd be able to do that for you. And James, you can always come to Springfield and go down here when they're having theirs. And when you get done, you and I can go fishing if your wife will let you buy more fishing equipment. <laughs> and there are a couple of inspection um, stations that are going to be available on that, on that 18th, like we talked about, from 10 to 12 um, on the Mark Twain Lake and the Long Branch Lake. So, you can look those up to find the location on Lane, Lake, Long Branch, Lake Marina, and uh, boat ramp there, Ray Green's boat ramp there in Monroe City. Very good. We got, I got to tell you guys that are watching today, we have two state highway patrol vehicles in front of our house, and every I can see out the window, everybody that comes down the street, man, they stop. <laughs> they're, I can only imagine what they think's going on in this house right now. But uh, tell Jerry on there. They, because they told us in Alabama, you didn't have to have a kill switch if it's 20 foot or longer. And they told Jason Matheny he had to wear it all the time. So you might tell Jerry that. Okay, Jerry, uh, Jerry Ishcomer, if you, uh, the guy down there that checked you all said you didn't have to wear a kill switch if your boat was 20 foot or longer. They told 24. Jason 24 foot or longer. And they told Jason Matheny he had to wear his all the time. So you better have, you better hook it up just for safety. It only takes a second to do that, Jerry. And if something would happen, we want to make sure we can uh, see you at the next tournament. I can't. Bass Pro is down there, and I will get me her. It will get me her. <laughs> you know what? We listen close there. I hate going to Bass Pro, James, because it's just, man, it's so crowded down there. And every time I do, I spend money. So I'd much rather take that money, put it in a boat tank, and go fishing. So, uh, Tell Katie not to worry about it. It's only money. You guys got plenty of it. You know, another good piece of equipment, especially for, for recreational boating, a lot of people don't realize is the skier down flag. So the skier down flag is is just that. It's it's the red or orange flag that has to be displayed whenever basically the boat is stopped and you have individuals in the water itself. You do not, uh, it's not required to be displayed as your, your boat is moving, as you have someone in tow or you're pulling a skier. But once you go back to, to retrieve those individuals, that's when you need to display that. Is there anything else you want to add? Yes, yeah, so there, there's actually a few. That's one of the laws that, that does tend to confuse people. If you have anyone that's in the water, whether you're just adrift, swimming, if you've been towing someone, skiing, tubes, whatever, any type of person enters the water from that vessel and or the extension like that tube or skis, the skier down flag needs to be displayed. An, ex an exception to that is if you are anchored, you do not need to display the flag if you are anchored. I don't know why um, people are still in the water and people can still lose visibility, especially if there's a lot of wakes or glare. Um, if so, even though you only have to, I recommend to people, even if they are anchored swimming, still to display that flag. It's, just, it's going to let other vessels in the area stay away from you. And there is also an exception that if you are on a PWC pulling someone, it's an exemption and you don't have to display a, a, you know, a flag, a skier down flag if you're on a PWC pulling someone. Even though I recommend to people to do that because you're still less visible and that's going to keep people away from you. 
I agree 100. percent That that is something that um, again the the guys fishing these tournaments, uh, tournament directors should look into is an anchor boat flag. I mean, I know it's not the same as what you're talking about, but in daytime, a lot of these guys are sitting in places that other boaters are not expecting them, and it would be great if they had some bright flag of some kind that tells everybody that, that hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, because these boats now, they're running 60, 70, some of them faster than that, miles per hour, and uh, boats don't have brakes. People forget about that. So you got to rely on the drag of the boat to slow you down. And it, uh, that's just a safety factor. And I know guys are going to say, well, that's just one more thing. Well, you know what? If it saves your life, it was worth that $5 for that flight. Sure. When people are on the water, those environmental factors increase the fatigue factor. And um, particularly on those sunny days, it's just, I, you know, eye strain's a big issue. People become physically fatigued. Mm -hmm. And Safety is our number one priority. Safety and education. We don't want to see people hit, uh, ran over, and better visibility and ensuring the vessel operators are paying attention to their surroundings and being safe around other boaters. Just increase that safety makes it a fun day. And sadly, we we the reported boating crashes that we experienced uh, in Missouri just last year was 173 that were reported. Wow. Where 101 people were injured and 16 people lost their lives. So, so we know this is a serious issue. And so, you know, you never think it's going to happen to you. Just like when you're on the road, we never think it's going to happen to you, but these things happen, especially with congestion, especially with the consumption of alcohol, without life jackets and so forth. So just do your part. Um, I don't see it. James Dockery wants to know what is the one oh. law that you find folks do not know the most. Oh, uh, well, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's actually a tough one. <coughs> There's a lot of laws that deal with um, equipment aspects, and a lot of the safety aspects are, um, you know, driving. Um, you know, but the, the majority of the what flag I, is, is, is yeah, one I was going to say that we, the, I didn't even know about that. Right. Yeah, that's that's we don't pull skiers, so. right? And that's um, people display it's people to play the display the skier down flag constantly, you know, and and they think and, they're doing the right thing, yeah. but actually it's just <laughs> the reverse of what the yeah. law states. It's it's when you're stopped, and it's not just when you're pulling the tuber skier. It's even like you said when you're out swimming and, and taking a break from your long day of fishing, and so. You need to have that flag, which is. I flag. think that's a great idea. I did what not. Color is it? The flag. Red, orange. red or orange. Red orange. It needs to be visible from 360. Ab absolutely, yeah, and just put it on a long pole, some kind. And that, do, do they just make them themselves? No, you can pick them up anywhere. Okay. Um, a lot of every marina you go to is going to have one of those flags on it, and a little stick and the stick or the bow section yeah. cup or whatever. They typically is able to do. I think it's a great idea. Did not know about that. That's unbelievable as much as we're on the water. But like I say, we don't normally pull skiers. So that's that's a new one for me. I, I'm yeah. glad to know about that. But we this. need to watch for them. Well, yeah. Absolutely. You yeah. know that they're out there in the water. Well, we haven't paid attention to it. And they may have been out there and we just didn't know it. I mean, and that's one of the things that you would learn if you would go to these safety courses. Right. Right. And one of the things I like to talk to people, especially about just vessel operators, pay, pay attention to the other vessels around you. Because particularly with the skiers, tubers, you know, just because that, that vessel slows down, they put that skier down flag up because someone's falling off the tube or falling off the skis, they still have to slow down, do a circle and come back. So depending on, you know, how fast they're able to do that, wind conditions, uh, various current conditions, you know, that person may be drifting from that location. So just, just pay attention and slow down a little bit. So, you know, and, and always you need to do that and pay attention. Um, but especially here in the next few weeks, Memorial Day is going to kick off and everybody's going to be out on the, on the lakes and the waterways. I know most of your viewers um, are on the lakes a lot. They're familiar with the lakes and the waterways, but there's a lot of people here in the next few weeks, weeks that won't be. So they're going to get out there. They're going to be um, traveling. At, and uh, and so you just need, need to be aware of that. People are unfamiliar with the lakes. 
um, the terrain. There's been a lot of flooding. There's going to be a lot of debris in those types of uh, waterways. And so just be extra cautious for that. One of the things that, that I found out a few years ago is that Lake Ozark is the number one um, a lake for pleasure birds yes, nationwide. Yeah. And with the Missouri River swollen like they are now, the Missouri and, and the Mississippi, where the normal people that go to the rivers to pleasure boat or fish or whatever it is they do, they can't do that right now with these rivers out of control. So that's going to put more pressure on our lakes. So you need to be even more cautious than before because we're going to have more boat traffic. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And when you're on the lakes this time of the year, just be especially cautious for flood debris. And when I refer to flood debris, you know, those rivers that came up, the lakes that came up. So down trees, brush, anything of that nature, that all ends up getting picked up. It flows downstream, you know, in those main currents. So there's a lot of times people won't see the partially submerged logs, trees, other debris, you know, that's, that's down there. And if you hit that and tear your boat up, your prop up, oh. tear the shaft up, it just turns into a bad day. You don't want to make your insurance company mad at you. <laughs> it hurts. It yeah. really does. Yeah. Uh, we was at Lake Ozark last week, mm -hmm. and the ramp had a big old log washed up on there. Of course, I, didn't, I couldn't move it myself, and everybody was running in and out. They was just using the one entrance to the, to the water. Um, courtesy at them ramps will go a long way of keeping yes. you out of trouble. Because yes. there's no sense of getting into it with some guy because he can't go any faster than he's already going. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go as fast as we used to. We didn't – I haven't seen that this year, but we've been at places when people are mad because it's in the wintertime and their boats froze to the trailer. Mm -hmm. You got to let it thaw out. There's no sense of you getting mad because you're the next one or the one after that in line and you want to hurry up and get out there. Because when you put your boat in the water, it's going to be in the same shape. Yeah. You know, courtesy at these boat ramps will go a long way, not only with your fellow boater, but with you guys being called and having to get in. And there's no sense of calling you guys for something trivial like that. You need to be paying attention to the important stuff. And, and an important aspect of that as well, which I think a lot of times people overlook, is especially when you're by yourself, you're launching your boat. We've sadly have had some people lose their lives as they're launching, and then they maybe fall into this cold water and they're in shock and and we have a lot of drowning incidents just as the person is launching their boat. They're not even out there on their vessel yet. So be be extra cautious too. If you fall and, and people forget that there's moss on those right. ramps. Right. Once you get past the water level on the ramp, it's slick under there. Right. And if you fall and hit your head and somebody's not catching, you're gone before anything knows it knows about it. And and uh, Cindy fell a few years ago uh, where the water had dropped. And she was trying to help me get the boat loaded, and it was mud underneath there, and his feet went out from under, and there you go. But uh, things happen, and, and safety is – hey, Duncan, how you doing? Uh, safety is so important, and people forget about it because they're anxious to get out in the boat, and they want to go fishing, or they want to go skiing, or whatever it is that they're going to do. But just take your time and, and uh, pay a little bit of attention. Common sense goes a long way. So I tell people, just relax, enjoy yourselves, take your time. The water's not going out. It's still going to be there. So. That's exactly right. Uh, I'll tell you a story <laughs> after the show uh, about that. Uh, you guys, if you have any more questions for these gentlemen, please get them in here. Uh, we're running on about 45 minutes, and they're busy, guys. I don't want to hold them up. But if you have any questions, we'd like to get them answered. Roger Gerloff, welcome. Dave Strickland, Jonathan Bevins, how you guys doing? Tanya McIntosh, Randall, Al Randall, Ralph Wiley. Randall McDaniel, John Spears, Russell Michaels, I know you're fishing today. Mary Kaufman, how you doing? Uh, Eddie Goodman, Stacy Gaston. You're not fishing the Sea Ark tournament unless you're fishing in somebody else's boat, my friend, because you don't have a Sea Ark. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> Duncan Jackson from Springfield, Illinois. How you doing, buddy? Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. I'm really shocked, but I do know that there's 200 boats of guys that normally watch our show that is on Wheeler Lake right now, and uh, they're worried about finding them fish because I just watched a video a while ago where some guys are putting 50s in pretty regular. So 
wherever those folks are at and the other guys that's not posting those videos, they're going to be looking for them until the captain's meeting tonight. Cindy, you see anything else? Andrew says, he's so glad that you're doing this show. Big thanks to Coast Guard and Water Patrol. I wish more people would see this. Did they put on a shareable video on safety? You have a video on there's, safety? There's a couple links to our, through the Missouri State Highway Patrol's website. Again, when you go to the Marine Division links, it has a few safety videos on there. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Andrew, what I'll probably do tonight or tomorrow uh, or the next day that it's raining, because it's rained here every day for a week, and the first chance I get to get out, we're going fishing. But I will go through that website, and I will share them through the Catfish Weekly public page so you guys can check them out, because uh, it, you're right, it is important for the safety aspect, aspect. People forget about that. Like I say, they want to go out and have a good time, catch fish, or whatever the case may be. And uh, you forget about it. And I, I'm the world's worst. Cindy's on me like a bad habit about not hooking up the, uh, what do you call it? The, yeah, the kill switch. Uh, because, and wear my life jacket. Uh, but I'm glad that she does in the end. It's aggravating at the time, but it's okay because I know that uh, with the kill switch hooked up, the boat will shut off. Uh, and I know if I got that life jacket on, I at least can stay float because let's face it i can't get her in a boat if she falls out on account of i have a bad shoulder she's got two bad knees she can't get me in a boat so if we can't get each other if we can't get in by ourselves we're in trouble so uh and there's it's not just us there's a lot of other people in the same condition and uh, some people just can't help another person in they're not physically strong enough but you're very welcome andrew and these these guys are the ones who we need to to uh, make sure that uh, we thank at the end of this because they're the ones that's made this show possible. Um, they come to our house to do this show. Uh, and it's, it's very, very great that they come up here and, and spent their afternoon on a Friday afternoon, helping us put this out there for you folks. Um, anything else that you guys want to go over? You know, something that, that we really haven't touched on and it's extremely important, I think to discuss real quickly is, um, is the consumption of alcohol. We know that it's a, obviously dangerous can be a potentially deadly situation on our, on our roadways and the waterways is the same. And so, you know, if, if alcohol is going to be a part of your plans, have that designated vessel operator, just as you would, you know, behind the wheel of a car, because uh, we know the thing, same things. We work a number of fatal crashes on our waterways as we do on our roadways. And, and it relates to the, the alcohol impairment. And so, have a plan in place, designate that, that sober driver, and um, and then just, again, be careful with that. I think that's that's great information right there because, um, again, I'm old enough to remember when that wasn't an issue. Nobody ever checked you for that. Uh, like not, you didn't matter how old you was, you could actually operate. I remember all those mm -hmm. days, but those days are gone. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is because there's so many more people on the waters and on the highways now than there ever was before. The boats are bigger, better, faster, this and that. And uh, safety is safety. You got to pay attention to it and make sure that you come back so you can go out the next trip. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for coming up oh, and doing the show with us. Thank you. Sure, glad to be here. You know, I, I told you before, but if there's ever anything we can do to help you promote any of these um, um, things that you're trying to do to get the word out, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And if you don't mind, I will share some of those links to our Facebook page so people can look up. And you guys share this video with your friends. And if they don't get to see it on Facebook or they don't do Facebook like a lot of people don't, uh, here in about an hour or so, this video will be loaded up on our YouTube page. You can go to Catfish Weekly and watch it again. Thank you guys so much. We Thanks appreciate you, you guys appreciate coming it. up and doing this. Be careful out there. Have fun on the water. Catch a lot of fish. I'm looking for pictures. Thank you guys so much.